Okay, so the things I want to see is the health check. I also want to see the graph. I also want to see, so I can see the how they um, how it does the graph, plots the graph, and I also want to do the load testing where I can turn it up or down. Can I can I try all those things? Sure. Okay, let's go. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, so we log in. Yeah. Okay, so what, what we want to do is we want to be able to run a load test yeah. and you want to see the dial going up and down, changing the load. And I okay. want to see the graph. The graph, okay. And, and I want to build my own test case like a health check. Okay, so um, when we're doing test cases, we come into the tool yeah. and this is the opening dashboard. We can see recent results that have occurred on the platform. Yeah. You can see scheduled test cases, and these are functional test cases, yeah. so regression or health check test cases which are coming up. You see what time they're going to run. We can see some stats about our platform. So this is nothing to do with the system under test. This is our platform to see what it's doing. And that if we start to run out of disk or start to run out of CPU, um, then we need to know about it. Yeah. So we track this all the time, we display on the dashboard, but we also log into our database. You can actually see that a, um, a, man, a scheduled test has actually just kicked off um, because we had one running at 4.15, that's now 4.15. And then we can also see some rel um, recent alarms that have been raised through the platform. Yeah. And they're saying that um, you know, an hour ago and at 2.41, we, we had a series of tests, um, we had test cases fail. Yeah, that's good. Now, yeah, excellent. So um, when we look at the test cases, we come over here to test cases. At the moment, I'm displaying them in a format known as the Gherkin format. We've got two different methods we can operate in, one of which is the Gherkin format. Yeah. Um, we were actually pushed by one of our customers to modify across to using this format. Yeah. And once uh, we saw the way their testers were operating with it, we took this on board and internally, this is the only format we currently, which we support behind the scenes. We have a completely different user interface which we can overlay over the top of it to allow our six-year-olds to drive it, where we can drag and drop elements onto the screen. Okay. But during our, um, anyone, uh, almost every customer we have, and I think actually every customer we have, once they've got used to using it, moves across to operating the Gherkin format, they're text-based, they can be checked into source control, they can be copied and pasted. Okay. And yeah. the other great thing about these is they're quite readable. Okay. And they're designed that a business person can sit down and write a scenario and maybe um, put some comments in about what they actually want the test case to do. Yep. And then one of your test engineers can come over the top and actually write the test case. Okay. So it's a really straightforward one. We're coming in and we, th we think of the test case as having two parts. Yep. This top part, um, which defines the f what we're actually doing while we're within the core. Yep. So these are the test steps we're doing. So we're going to dial a number. We're dialing within a, on net at the moment, um, attached to a, a local Genesis environment. Yeah. And so we can just dial a short number, which is yeah. 8011. That's the internal number for one of their IVR menus. Yeah. Then the first thing What's we... What's an IVR menu? So IVRs are those machines that press one for this, press two for oh, that. Oh, yes. So that's their internal. So that would be a number in there on their actual menu. Yeah. yeah. So okay. this may... Yeah. So this may relate to... They probably have one three number point sitting in front of this. Then pointing back to this menu. So when the customer answer it says... You know, hi, um, welcome to such and such bank uh, for service, press one, yep. for sales, press two. Yep, got you. Yep. In this case, the system answers the phone and says, please enter your account number, and then says, please enter your password, then plays a menu, you can press one, two, three, four, or five, and then it puts you into a queue for an agent. Right. So when we dial it, the first, so given we've dialed this number, the first thing we expect is the call's going to get answered. Yep. And when we look at a call getting answered, first, yep. Firstly, we actually want it to get answered, but secondly, whenever we've got something like this, we've got these timings. Oh, so that's two seconds. Yeah, so we want it to be answered within two seconds. Two seconds is okay. Yeah. Ideally, we want it to be answered in less than one second. So yeah. zero to one second, that's our Goldilocks period. Yeah. And that's a pass. Now, to two seconds, the test hasn't, hasn't, test hasn't failed, but we'll mark it as acceptable. 
So then we can go back and have a look at that if we've got spare time and we want to look at our, our marginal passes. And yeah. anything after two cents is an outright fail. Okay. Now, test case will continue, but this the whole result will be a failure at best. Yep. And then we'll go through a, uh, a series of um, in-call actions. Yep. And these are where we may wait a while for something to happen. We may enter some numbers on our phone. So given I've entered or given I've waited this many seconds, we could also say given I've played this sound recording. Yep. Or you may have a statement that says given I have waited for silence or given I have waited for um, audio yep. before continuing. Okay. So we'll go through this. Given I've done this and waited and press this do, 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 and we'll navigate through our IVR waiting okay. and pressing numbers. Then at, by the time we press one, we'll then enter a queue and there'll be quite a long message, we'll wait 30 seconds, and then we'll hang up. Yeah. So these are the parts of the test case which are driving the core flow. Okay. Then once we hang up, we fall into the bottom half, which are our assertions mm -hmm. about the core. These are all the things that we should, that we expected when we go back and analyse the call and analyse the system under test. These are the things that we thought should have happened. So we think the call should have gone into queue 8011. Yep. That's the number we dialed. We expected to see it hit that on the platform. Yep. And we'll be watching that queue and make sure the call actually arrived on that one. Yep. Yep. We expect that based on what we typed in, that the Genesis system will have said, okay, this call is of type, the service is billing and the customer segment is sil silver. It knows the customer segment because I've entered in you um, customer ID 1201, which is a silver customer, yep. and their password inventively is also 1201. Oh, yeah. Because the system under <laughs> test it. It's a canned Genesis environment, yeah. and that's why this is their main test number and has uh, gold, silver, and bronze customers yeah. and uh, billing and changes and new accounts. Yeah. Okay, so um, we, we expect to be customer silver. Then we can also look at things that we don't expect to happen. We don't expect it to appear as a sales call. Yeah. This would normally be used, we don't expect anything about an error. So yep. if, if there's an error, it puts in a key of error and a value of what the error was. And yep. these acts, although they look very simple, are actually can be quite complex expressions. The, uh, what computer programmers call regular expressions. So you can put in the ability to say, I, don't, I want to look for something to begin with a capital B and then have three lowercase numbers and whatever. You can write com quite complex rules in there. In actual practice, people almost always write very simple ones. I expect to see this exact text. Yep. Then there are a few other things that we want to check for. We want to look, how long was it before we heard any audio? So this is how long was it before it started streaming RTP, which is the spoken voice to us. Yes. I want to see that. Again, we've got this Goldilocks period. Oh, that's the RTP there. Yep, so preferably the, within yeah. 300 milliseconds. But if it's after 200 milliseconds, I will warn. What's jitter? Because a jitter is when we packetize audio. So audio, it's not like there's no cable coming from us to you. It's coming over a network. Yeah. And they encode the audio up into packets. Jitter looks at the delay between when we expect the next packet to arrive and when it actually arrives. Oh, okay. So we expect to see one generally every 20 milliseconds yeah. for um, the codecs that most people use for their yeah. voice. So Jitta looks at, well, we expect it every 20 milliseconds. Now, it's okay if it's a bit late because it's all there's a slight delay built into the whole speech anyway. But once it's about 100 milliseconds late, you've got real problems because yeah. it has to start filling in the gap or it has to start playing silence yeah. or whatever. So how do I write one of these? Well, what you'd normally do is start with one that was written. But like we, we might drive this one first, then we'll take a copy of it, and I'll walk out of the room and get you to modify it, and then okay. you can call me back in and tell me how, All right. when, you, when you think you've got it going. All right. Let's so, um, and then the final two steps, these are the interesting ones. These are where we say, okay, it went in the right queue, I have the right attached data, but did we hear the right thing? Did it say welcome? Did it say you've got new account message? And when we think about did we hear the audio we expected to hear, we've got two, two parts to it. One is did we hear it at the right time? So we expect to say welcome after we've typed in the password. Yep. 
So um, that is about, we want to say if it's after six and a half seconds into the call, then it's acceptable, but we definitely want it within seven seconds into the call. So it should be no, if it happens, if we detect the welcome after seven and a half seconds, then we'll fail. Yeah. But there's also a time where it's too soon to have heard it. Yeah. Which is we're sending in response to, well, we answered, we waited two seconds, we punched in that, we waited one second, we punched in that. So we should not have been able to hear it before three seconds into the call. Yeah. So we've got a fail before three seconds and a fail after seven and a half seconds and then a warning if it's after between six and a half and seven seconds. So we've got our yeah. Goldilocks period, we've got our OK period, and then we've got our two failure periods on the side of that. OK. But then we've also got an accuracy in that not only did we want to hear that prompt, but we want to have heard it well. So we might say we want a 100% match with what we expected to hear, or 99 or 98%. Okay. And we do a lot of maths behind the scenes where we get the what we heard and what, what was expected from our audio prompt line, which I can show you in a minute, and say, how good a match was that? Okay. So this is saying we want really good matches, seven seconds and eight and a half seconds for those two messages. So we build up one or more test cases and we bind them into something we call, uh, we just having saved, so let's save that. What's happened there? Have we lost the internet? We've lost the internet. Uh oh. Just put my iPhone on. Is that half on at the top? Yeah. We lost the internet. <laughs> but we're back. Any moment now. Okay. So we're on the internet. Let's just hit save. It may want us to re log in. We're lucky, so we hit refresh. Let's see if it drives us through. Login. No, okay, we didn't lose our session, which is great. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we've got our, and we can see the changes we made were actually were safe because we've got that gap which we pushed in there. Yeah. So we, we may write one or more test cases, and then we have to bind them into a test set. Yep. And let's just jump into examples and create a new test set, which we'll call. Virginia, so I'm going to type that in. There we go, Virginia. Okay. Test. Yeah, we can put whatever notes we want in. Yeah. Okay, now we need to say which tests do we want to um, include in that? Well, that silver one. What do we do? How okay, do we? So no, no, I'm going to do it. So it's a new test name. Virginia, yep. test. Okay, then we need to get out a billing silver. Yeah, and I just put a one, is that right? Yep, we put a one, one. there. And shall I do a uh, No, we don't need any gum. Okay, just do silver. Okay. Execute so, under load. Yep, so that will start a load test where you can see the dial. Okay, let's do it. So, yes, execute this now as a Go load ahead. test. <laughs> Go ahead and make my day. Oh my okay, so this has started dialing now. And what we see is there's five calls in progress with a maximum of five calls. So, it's actually already reached its initial limit, which we had set to say only dial five, and it would be dialing one call per second. However, because it's already reached its maximum number of calls in progress, then it stopped dialing until, until one of those calls finishes, or until we change what our maximum limit is for calls in progress. How do I dial it up then? Okay, so let's dial it up. So we click on this blue button, change dial rate and channel limit, I'm okay, so let's 15. change that to 15. We'll throw caution to the wind. Up the limits. Yep. Up the limits. Go. Okay, so we see immediately this has changed to 15. Start to dial new calls, one new call per second. We can see the traffic, the RTP traffic flowing in and out of the environment. Um, has is that where increased. the voice is? is so, yeah, the RTP yeah. is actually the voice. When you hear the voice. Packets flying back and forth. Yeah. And we see these calls coming in. So while this is running, we can actually open it up and start drilling down and see what's going on. So we see Virginia, we see billing test cases. Now we can actually start to look at stats like our time to answer. So here we see our first five calls. It's probably, yeah, there's one up there hiding as well. So each one of these, each one of these calls, we see they're taking between 75 and 110 milliseconds to answer, which is about what we expect. 
as we do thousands of calls, this graph will be, start to become a lot more yep. steady. Um, so we'll, we'll let it run away for 15, uh, 15 for a while. But any one of these calls, we actually pull it up and say, well, show me this actual call. Ah. And here we have... Oh, and you can play the, the actual call. call. Yeah. So... Oh, we actually can't play because I've got a headset plugged in. <laughs> Maybe, oh, wow. Maybe we unplug this for a yeah, moment. Plug, okay. um, let's listen to it. Please enter your account number. It's 1201. One, two, one. Welcome. Welcome. For billing questions, press 1. For new accounts, press 2. Please hold while I transfer your call to the next available agent. All of our agents are currently busy, but we'll be with Click around. Your pen. Listen to bits around. Okay, so when we. Wait a sec. Yep. Okay, so when we were doing it, you may remember that we waited five seconds and then we pressed 1201 and then we waited and we can actually look exactly what our test case says up here if we wanted to. But, um, so is this a health check? A test case, a health check? The, the test cases are test cases and that's one of the great things about the system. You can reuse your test cases between load test, health check and... Oh, okay, it's a separate And regression test. Okay. No, all test cases. It's, oh, just, wow. it's just how we go about executing. Yeah. Do we do we run them once? Do we run them ten times a second? Whatever is is a load test where you run them more than once? Yeah, so you run the same test case multiple times per second, yeah. looking at it and trying to look at the difference of behaviour as you start to increase the load. What changes? And then how do you make a test case a regression across the whole system? So by doing that, what we do is we write multiple different test cases which do different things. So the first one might put in a correct username and password. Oh, okay. Next one may put in an incorrect password and make sure the system behaves correctly and goes, sorry, I don't recognize that password. Please enter your account number and password. So it's a collection of test cases. Yeah. The regression is just a collection of, and each one of them is quite simple and yeah. tests just one more new bit. And by running these, you can start to see, well, when they start to fail, you suddenly go, oh, everyone that's doing an account balance is failing. Everyone which is trying to ID and B is. And what's failing. the difference between five health checks and, say, a regression test with five different tests in it? Is it that they're all the same time? Is it the timing? So, load testing or regression? Regression. So, regression, you generally execute a lot of test cases. So, you're talking maybe 500, maybe 1,000 oh, tests. Oh, okay. So and we'll you can do those all at the same time. So, you, you may do 50 calls at a time and chunk through it very quickly within 15 minutes or so. Um, while health check, you're only going to do five calls. Right. And so, you may do them more concurrently. You may do one each minute. So, a health check is just a smaller scale. So, thing. if we hit refresh data, yeah. we should be able to say, okay, we've done 78 calls now. We click on here. And this call started oh, wow. picking up. All done. We start to see yeah. all the calls. Oh, on there. Okay. Um, and again, you can drill down into each one on this onto any one of them. Now, here we've got all of the assertions we spoke about. So remember, we spoke about the RTP jitter, yep. the time. We can also look at a few really cool things. We can immediately pull up if you had a copy of Wireshark on your laptop, which you don't. You don't have on your laptop. But this will pull down the network trace, and then your computer will say, I don't know how to open that. If you had the tool which any engineer would normally have on their computer, that they could then open that up, and they could see every packet that was sent and received by us in the system under test, exactly what we sent when we received it. So if they don't believe any of our stats, pull it up in the Wireshark and look at the network trace. It'll tell you exactly what happened. Oh, wow. You can also look at our logs, and this is a really cool one, this call export. So you could pull down the call recorder, which is a my file. This call export, one of our customers actually asked for this for. And what this does is it pulls down a little zip file, and zip file has the network trace, has the call recording, has this page of all the information ready to go in one zip file. So then the engineer, when he sees a failed call, can take the zip file, email to someone else and say, hey, we just ran this test case, it failed, here's all the cool details, this is what ah. I heard, go off and look into this. So this can go straight to the engineer. And also has a link back to this screen, so then they can write in the notes what actually happened. Oh, wow. And they may actually want to change the result. So imagine this was a file call and went wrong, and they go, okay, we understand why that happened, let's override this result and make it acceptable or, yep. or a pass. So any... Test, you can ever, and even, and this is the idea of the system under 
That's fantastic. This is the idea of the system on the other end. So you can hand this off to the genes engineer and say, hey, the call with this UUID failed. Go and work out what it is. And this is the server that it's actually running on. Yeah. Um, wow. So let's jump back. It's back on into the live test. Yeah. Um, and actually jump back to the main screen. Let's pump this up a little bit harder, turn the dial up to a point where we expect to I start to fail. I want to do it. I want to do it. So let's change it up to say uh, 70 calls. Bearing in mind, this and the pump system, so the Genesis system and the pump system are running on one small tower. Yeah. And um, it's actually the Genesis system which starts to fail. In terms of us, we're running the calls and we're using about less than one, well, around 1% 1 of the CPU, 2%. Um, we're not using much CPU um, of the of the few cores I've got dedicated to pump. And this shows us how fast it is too. Yeah. So with this sort of testing, we can ramp it up. We can also, at the moment you did increase the total number, we can also increase the number that we dial per second. So if we change it up to two, it'll start every second. So every half second it'll, it'll launch another core. Oh, so it's now even on there. Yeah, so we see that. Yeah. And that comes through in our reporting. So, so there's been 140 calls already. 140 complete. We've got another 57 in play at the moment. Oh, wow. This is so fast. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> so this, um, this level of testing, it's really easy to turn it up and down. So we'll turn it up and we'll start to see failing. Then we can pull it back down, push back up, and you'll watch it. Um, That's we'll so cool that you can sell, sell, send the whole file. This yeah, um, so that was a request by one of our end customers, actually, a support partner of one of our customers. He said, oh, it's really great to get this, but I've got to sort of pull down this file and that file and zip it up. Can you just, can you just do an export button? And the next day we pushed out an update with that and they were, they were loving it. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so if we open up our core results now, we well, should be able to look at a ton of answer. So we still don't have many calls, but you suddenly see that we increased it here. If we, if we have a layout with well, how many sessions do we ask for, we see that we stepped up to 70 there, which correlates with when we start seeing more calls or caps. We stepped up slightly later. What's caps? Uh, the, oh, number the number of calls per attempts second. per second. Okay, yeah, that's the number per second. Um, and we can also overlay it with our CPU usage. That's very important because whenever you start to see failures, you want to make sure that we weren't overloaded. Yep. So if you do something dumb enough in one of your test cases, <laughs> um, then you can start to increase, or you and you try and just run too much on a node of our environment and push it past what we've provisioned for you. Yep. You could start to burn CPU on our side, which would then start to affect the test results. So we, we always need to bear in mind when we see failures, we need to jump across here and look: Did we run out of CPU? Yeah, I've never. But, heard of RTP before, Jitter, and these, all these things you've taught me about, would most of the engineers said be familiar with all Yeah, so they would know that straight off the cuff. So I can do this and I don't even know about it. Yeah. So <laughs> we're looking at time to answer here. Yeah. We also look at, well, how long was it before it actually started streaming any audio back towards us? Yes. Which is time to RTP. The voice, yeah. Then we can look at, well, how long was it, not only after it started streaming audio, but how long was it before it streamed audio that wasn't silent? So normally when the system answers the phone, it will answer the phone, and then a little bit later it'll start streaming audio to you, but that's always silent at the beginning. And then a little bit later, still it'll start to stream, hello, welcome to bank ABC. Yes. Um, at that point, that's when the customer thinks it's been answered when they see that, when they hear that, hello. Um, still then they don't know. But from a technical perspective, you really care about the difference between the three, because they tell you which part of the system under test is starting to struggle. So much be I say, yeah, it's still answering, but it isn't streaming the audio to me. So have we done the actual test, or is it nearly finished now? Uh, it, it'll run until we tell, you know, tell it to stop. So what we'll do in a moment is actually turn it up. Then here we can look at, well, how long did the calls go for? We expect they should have walk on roughly the same time, and here we're talking about a variance from 39 seconds, 650 up to 39.90. So they're all taking basically the same amount of time. That's good. Results over time we can look and see. Oh, that's the one you were saying. That's oh, we had one acceptable call, so or three acceptable calls. So we'll drill in and have a look at those in a minute. Three unacceptable calls. No, three that are acceptable. So they're not good, they're only okay. Oh, okay. It's like the yellow. It's like the yellow. yellow bit there. Oh, okay. And if we start to see little bits of red there, then we'd start thinking, oh, yeah, we're getting faster. So there's none unsatisfactory. If we, hit, if we hit refresh here, we'll see that that, that will go up. Okay, we've had four now, so if we. Oh, wow. 
you know, there must have been one somewhere So else. that's really good. So to have plotted this graph before, is that the one that would have taken you? So what we've taken ages is this one here. So this is where we look at how long it took to respond to the DTMF. So this is looking at as a scatter diagram yes. with time, yep. the time into the, that the call was made versus the response time. Yep. So this shows us over time, did it get worse? We're actually seeing it get a little bit worse. Well, well we kind of expect that because we increased our load. Yeah. So expect but then what we can also do is um, we don't have many courses. We're very spiky, but we can distribute it. Instead of looking at it, responses over time, we can push them all on top of each other and say, well, what was our, our response time looking like, the frequency of each different response time? So this lets us suddenly see, do we have two distinct periods? One here, we tend to be sort of answering about 1.83 to 1.9 seconds. So that's, that's acceptable. That's Less pretty good. That's when you want, around two yep. seconds. You don't want too quick, as dumb as it sounds, because the person's got to get the phone back up to the rear. But you definitely don't want to be that long that they've gone, oh, there's a problem there, and pull them away to see if they punch yep. them along up. You want it on to as close to two seconds as it can be. And some people even end up putting silence at the beginning of the next prompt just to get it out to around two seconds if they get something that responds too damn quickly, as dumb as it sounds. And then we'll actually see that we've had a few here that are actually slow. Um, and that's why the graph's going up to there. Or we can look at the cumulative distribution. And that's what you'd expect because we zoomed it up. Yep. Yeah. And you normally expect, once you get more traffic than this, to see some sort of log normal distribution. So um, sort of a quick ramp up and then a tail coming back off the yep. end. But we've just got so few samples. We're only talking about 1,000 samples. Oh, 450 samples, nothing. And then this is going to show the same thing. Yep. Now, we can only ever show the caps and sessions and CPU on the scatter diagram because they happen at a particular time. Yes. It doesn't make sense to look at them under the frequency yes. distribution. Yep. Okay, so these are the graphs here which we just could not get and um, they are vitally important. Okay, so let's go in. And okay, can I do my own one now? Okay, but before <laughs> we do that, I've seen some unacceptable too. So let's just go in and actually drive in and try and identify which calls these are. So we'll go through and filter the calls and say, only show me the unacceptable ones. Oh, that's great. You've got a filter for Okay. It. So I'm seeing different reasons for failing. So I'm seeing one, it just didn't seem to think it found the prompt at all. One, it said it found it, but it only found 75% of it. One, it, it found it, but it found it too late. So these may all be questions of where the prompt played, but it's played too late. Remember how we had that last time we were yes. willing to accept it? Um, well, Please. this... This yeah. heard it, but it would have been right on the cutoff period. So we'll see a bit of a delay after. Oh, it's here. Let's so. pull this out. For a new account, please hold while I transfer your call to the next available agent. All okay. of our agents. Welcome for billing questions. So we, we had quite one. a delay for what we're doing. For new accounts, please periods. hold while I transfer but your call for to new the next accounts available was agent. Too All of our agents are currently busy, but we'll be with you as soon as possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. For a new account, please hold. You can see what the so that was the. So it said it got it at eight one six, but it got it just too late. Yeah. It was expecting to hear it earlier, but it got it all. Then, if we go through some of the others, so again, it's just a, it's actually a delay here on this response time. Yeah. And if we go through and look at each one of these, we'll see it's actually too slow and trying to match the password is what most of those failures are going to be. So this is a failure and it would be slow password lookup, so we can type that in. Um, the reason you type the notes in is because you're doing load test, there may be 50 foul calls. Just to remind you later. Yeah, um, just, I wouldn't, you wouldn't believe the number of times, I, I'd struck myself as a clever guy, that I've analysed the same call two times when looking at faults and then got to the end and go, oh, I already knew that call, I, I looked at that yesterday night. Yeah. Or when you've got three or four people looking at the file calls, two people grab the one call. So you could just go to notes and say, Virginia's working on this one. Okay. And then, because, you know, the notes are shared amongst everyone, so if they're not straight over, I go, oh, Jim's already got this one. Fine, let's, let's move on to the next So one. maybe write my name as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Do I need to save it? Uh, everything just saves, you should type it. It's all very it's great, isn't it? Except for the test case screen, because that shows you up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's. Can I do like my? That. Can I do my own test case now? Okay. Okay. So let's. Um, <laughs> we didn't have to turn this up. It actually started to fail on its own accord. So what we might do yes. is just stop the test run. Yep. If we click stop once, 
it's now bleeding the calls off. So it stopped dialing you once, it set the limit to zero. And then once all the active calls, so still 60 calls up, end, it will naturally end the test case. Test yep. run. However, if you want it to be main, you could just click it again and it'll hang up on all the active calls. Um, we don't really want to do that because they're all fail because they won't be... It won't uh, be representative in the results. Yeah. So. Well, just suddenly you'll get a whole pile of failures at the end. And you normally do that if you realise there's a problem you just want to stop the traffic. Bang, 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 bang. Hit it twice and it hangs up and everything. And so you'd only do that if you wanted to stop the traffic in the middle of an emergency kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Like you're testing and suddenly realise there's a problem with the test case. It was going to production agents or, or something dumb like that. Or um, you, you'd have the results. Okay. Okay. So that ended. All right. Now, okay, so we can go into test cases. Okay, and then I'm going to just modify this one. Okay, what we might do, yep, okay. Now I want it to... Do you want me to leave the room and let you go or do you want me to stay here? Yeah, but go? I need to know what prompts I can use. <laughs> okay, so some of the things we could do is we could modify the test case so that the... Um... I'm going to change it so that it waits longer after the password and see if they all pass. How about I do that? Do so when was the password? It was here, wasn't it? Uh, and then wait. Yeah, it was there. So should I say wait 6,000? Would that have fixed it? 6, 7, 10? I don't know. Um, you're, you're the master of your own destiny here. We change it to whatever you want. Better, should we make it 6? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's change it. Had we have not stopped the test run, that would have taken effect immediately for any call style. But, um, oh, okay. But we stopped the test run. We're going to make a new one. So now, if I do this one, maybe those other ones won't fail now. Yeah, so they probably won't fail. But you know what? Um, Should we try it? Yeah, test, we can. Let's test it. Okay. They, Wait. they will still fail, but when they fail, I'll, t I'll talk to you. I might about change a few more. I want to change a few more things. What else can I change? Well, you could change the number we press at the end. Uh, so I remember how we... Uh, I've entered one. How about yeah, I've so, entered two? Okay, so what that will do is that will send you through to a different service. Okay. So as soon as we do that, if you if you actually picked up the phone and dialed 8011 internally, you would hear it says press one for um, billing, press two for changes, press three for new accounts. Or something. So that could be two. Okay. Should I do new or three for new accounts? Well, let's, I can just have a look at it because I've got a test case for each one of them. That's gold there. Yeah, so two is new accounts. Okay, so when we do this, this will proceed quite happily. It'll wait six seconds, then I'll press two. Okay. And we'll get a slightly different message. This will still be correct. Oh, the message down new account won't be right. That will be wrong. And also, um, it won't enter into billing anymore. It's going to be... Uh, I'm, I'm not checking the audio on the other one. But, um, but let's run a test case and I'll show you exactly what it does. Okay, so billing will be wrong. Can we, so let's just for it. fun, because yeah. this is our, our demo environment, let's just take a copy of this test case and modify a copy. So we'll copy and paste that, just change that back to one, and save it, and create a new test case with the other one. Oh yeah, good idea. Well, that's how I do new test case. Yeah, then we can. Paste, paste that in. And then change and, it. Okay, so let's give it a name. Let's call the scenario, uh, that top scenario, let's call that um, Virginia. <laughs> this isn't normally how you do these, is it? But we'll do that later. We're having fun. Okay, so this is your modified one. We've already done two. Now, we know this is going to fail when you run it, because, but let's it's run it anyway and watch it fail and then see what we have to do to fix it. Okay. It'll fail because it says billing and it's supposed yeah. to not be billing, it's supposed to be. Yeah, and it'll also game. may fail because of the audio. So we'll need to add that to a test set so we can execute it. Okay, so now what do I do? I've done so that. We go up to test sets. Well, that's right. We have a test set called Virginia, I think. Yeah. So let's um, pull out my other test case and add you on your test case. Here. Yeah, take that out, put this one in. Okay, and let's just execute, execute once. once. So we'll just fire up a test case. Now the result for this, uh, here it looks pretty similar. Um, besides, we, there's no point, it doesn't let us change the dialing rate because we've already dialed all our calls. Um, there is only one call. Um, so let's just let this run until it completes and it takes about 
30 or 40 seconds because you increase the time by one second. <laughs> well, I know how to use this software now. It's, it's all very <laughs> I simple. use it. <laughs> well, it, it shouldn't be hard. What we're trying to do is test telephone systems. Um, and we're not trying to sell professional services. There's no, there's no gain in this making it difficult. No. And this was one of my pet peeves is that we couldn't go off and test it. Now this failed, we expect it to fail, so let's, um, let's open up the test set. But I'll open it. Oh, you did. Okay, so now, because it's a functional test case, the, the view is a little bit different. Okay. Okay, so what found about it? Okay, I was actually happy because this here, Wait a second, let me um, take this. Chain please hold while for new account, press 2. For chain please hold while I question, press 1. For new account, for billing questions, press so 1. Billing for billing for new account, press, press two. 2. Okay, so for we've gone into new accounts. Hold while I transfer your call to the next available agent. All of our agents. So we've gone into new accounts, but it said, well, it says we've got service billing. And it we know. It should be new accounts, but we don't actually know what it is. Cheap. We can look in our SIP endpoint log and we can see what, oh sorry, our processing log. And we can see all of the attached data that they had. And just up here. Now one of them is this key service and new account. So that's the one we want. So this is the log of, these are all of the keys that have been attached to the call back on the Genesis side, and we, we suck them all into our side. So that you can, so we know, can what to, so you know what to call them. And it's really, testers actually find it really useful, because often when they've made a call, they, they want to have a look at the ones that they, tend, that they wrote in, but they also kind of want to be able to look at... Um, is that where I don't know it is, service? It's got to be, does it have to be spelt the same way? Like it has to be absolutely identical. Is that identical? Yep. Yeah. So and what about accounts. here? Oh, um, we don't need that one because that prompt is actually still there. That's for new accounts, press one. And that, that prompt is still applied anyway. Okay. So let's save that. So now you'd probably suspect that you have to go back through and run a new test case. Yep. But you don't. No. That's one of the key features about what we do. So what do you is mean? Because we've got all of the network traces and all the attached data, we can just reprocess the results. Refresh it. So if we go, no, we actually go up to this drop down and we say yeah. reprocess all results. The whole one? Yeah. <laughs> well, and for one call, it's structures nothing. But if you've done a load just with 40,000 hey, calls, but that's what we expected. You shouldn't be surprised. But for, for a test case where you had one call, that's irrelevant because you can rerun it. But for, for a test case where you've done a load test with 40,000 and you'd pay, and these had been going over the, over the PST, you're paying for these phone calls and you, and you want to reprocess it and you don't want to wait four hours for it to run, you can hit reprocess and it chunks through it all and 10 minutes later it spits out and goes, here's what the result would have been. So if you do a reprocess, is it faster than rerunning the test? Yeah, because it just reanalyzes the results. Yep based on the new input. Now, it can only do it in certain, certain circumstances. You can't change those ones that did the flow. Yes. Because it, it's not replacing the call. It's assuming that given the so call recording... So that's a load, in a load test, you mean you can't redo it? Well, you can't do it if you... Re, within your test case, so let's just pull up the test case. Yep. If you were... Because it doesn't remake the call, if you made any changes to these ones where wait this long, enter a different thing, it can't do those. Okay. Because it doesn't make the new call, it just reanalyzes the results. Yes. But you can change all these ones and reprocess the results and see what outcome you would have got with a different set of questions you're asking about the results. So the assertions can change. Um, and that's a huge saving. And one of the key things we did was be able to reprocess all the results. Well, that's fantastic. All right. Um, so that works. So now we could fire that up as a load test as well and have a good old time. And these are the sorts of things which... Um, we find, so if you go back to test sets, yep. you can kick off your Virginia and so then set Virginia, kick back off the load test. Oh, okay, just do oh, what we can also do, under load. Yeah. We can also schedule your test case. So if we wanted to make this a, um, a health see. check, yeah. we could say, you know what, Monday to Friday, 
We want to run this at 9 a.m. We want to repeat it every 15 minutes. Until 5. Maybe don't do this one because yeah. I don't want it to wait that long. That's it's all right. <laughs> um, well, it's the weekend, isn't it? So, <laughs> these ones here. so if we do this straight away, what we should see is within a did it, 5 pm, didn't we? Test sets. Virginia. Yep. And if we extend that out to 11 p.m. We can see some now. We'll see scheduled test cases coming up. Oh, yeah. Um, They're all there. Yeah. And this just shows you the next um, six or something. Oh, wow. That are going to And it's up. not on the dashboard, is it? So we can so also... So are they other ones, these ones? So dashboard and my is a different test run. We already have scheduled. Oh, okay. So it's, that runs every 15 minutes until 6 p.m. Okay. Because um, I saw it say on the last one that you could add it to a dashboard. Yeah, so... so I know that's not on the I'll, dashboard. I'll, I'll show you that as well in a second. So also, remember when we ran a functional test case? Yep. And it failed? Yep. That raised an alarm on the platform. Now, we don't have these alarms configured to send SMSs or emails or anything because they're our, our demo system. But had that have been a real functional test case, it failed. So it would have sent, it would have sent what are the alarm is configured for this platform. So it might have emailed at the um, ops team saying, we just had a functional test case fail. Yep. Um, That's great. So, um, all right. So we've got. Thanks. So is that everything you want to see? Yeah. Um, I did the graphs. I did the load thing. I did the tests. I did the health check. Yep, it's everything. Uh, excellent. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we'll do another one one day with uh, the dashboards. Okay. Oh. I just wanted to know one more thing about the dashboard. Can you show me that? Is it, so where do I go? Okay, so when we talk about dashboards, we've got two different types of dashboards we typically use. Where do one, I go? One would be for displaying up on a wall board within a contact center. So if we open up, if we go to test sets, yeah. and open up any one of the test sets. My one? So we could open up your one, but maybe Demo Bank would be a better one to, okay, to demo. run. Yep. And then we should be able to, if you scroll down to the bottom of this test case, we've got both Exposes Dashboard, I'll show you where that appears in a while, or Openers Dashboard. So if you click Openers Dashboard, what this does is it opens a full screen window yeah. showing each one of the test cases that appears within, dash, within the test set, yeah. and then the last 10 times I've been executed, I'll and see. shows you which, which one's passed, which one's failed, and when they failed, what about it failed? So each one of these is a test. So each one of these is a li like a, te a phone number into this demo bank. Yeah. So they have six different phone numbers coming in, and then that's each one of them has one test case, which we'll go through and navigate to, to give us an idea. Does this environment appear to be operational? Yeah. We saw actually at three forty-five, we had problems across the entire environment. The slow responses initial delays and audio, well that actually corresponds to when we were running a load test on its environment, so that doesn't actually surprise me. But this is the sort of output you get from a, a dashboard, and this is designed to be up on the wall in an operations centre within uh, one of these larger organisations, in this case within the, within the famous bank known as Demo Bank. <laughs> and then okay, how do so I go we can, So we can click back here on Pup to jump back to the main screen. It's not really designed to be jumping in and out of in that it's normally put up on a wallboard. Yeah. The other sort of dashboard, so we can also see that under here yep. because we clicked on Expose as demo bank. Yes. The other one which we can display is called the functional summary. And this is more used by a tester. Yep. And what this does is it looks at every set of tests which have been executed functionally recently. Um, in this case, we've got demo bank and regression um, 8011 and um, it shows you when they've been run recently was it all good in the case of demo bank yep for the last six this one or was it all bad and then how long has it been good for or how long has it been bad for how long has it been since the last it successfully passed 
or was unsuccessful, and they could see the high level results over time. Then they could drill into these and see the individual test cases. And for these individual test cases, they can see well what the recent what the most recent result was, and then for each previous run, yep. what happened. Okay. And so this is a test set created around one test case, and we know there's certain bits of functionality which don't work in this environment. Firstly, it's not externally dialable. So every time we try and dial it externally, we're getting busy. Well, that's because we've never hooked up the external number to this. It's a test internal system. We kind of expected that test case to fail until we implement that functionality. Yeah. The other thing we know is that if you enter, uh, if you don't enter a pin in this core flow, when we were writing the test cases, we actually had expected that it would repeat, no, please enter your pin number and you don't enter it. Uh, you need to enter your pin number, this will be a four digit number, yeah. and it should re-prompt you, it's not re-prompting you. Yeah. Well, that's because it's just a little test system that the vendor knocked together. Yeah. And when we're writing our test cases, trying to show all the things we could do, we sillily assumed this would be repeated, we put in a test case for it and it failed, and went, you mean they don't repeat that? And we dialed in and we made it, and went, oh my God, they, they don't repeat that. Um, so, yeah. Same with the account number. So these have always been busy, net B1. So they can look at, um, so this is really great. You check some code in, do an automatic build, the regression test run, and then you can see, okay, we had three failures, and then you're looking at actually those have always been failing, or they've never failed before, and, and this is a new problem. That's great. All right, well, that's fantastic. Okay, thank you. Thanks.